Um, to order, <laughs> Marcus Jones, the manager. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, I know we're uh, limited on time. Um, before we go into the Council concerns, there are two items on the agenda that um, we'd like to get to this evening. One is that um, Frank Duke has a presentation on multi-family development status. The question was the apartments. Um, do we have a situation where we've um, had some apartments that have been approved, but we haven't broken ground on it? So he has a, a brief presentation on that. And then Daryl Hill also has a very brief presentation, which is three or four slides, with some tax exemptions um, from personal property that's going to be, it's going to come up in November. So those are two. We just wanted to make sure that you didn't have a situation where you vote on it before hearing about it. But that's the uh, the two presentations that we have tonight. And I can turn it over to you, uh, okay. Council. Okay. Well, okay. we don't have a lot of time. If somebody's really got something they have, have, have to get out on okay. the table, I put mine in writing. Submitted. We'll, we'll talk about it next meeting. Okay. Okay. If you want. Okay. Right. Right. One thing I've got is I got an email. Maybe we all did about the governor's conference call about mandates that they want. And we don't think a fair as a city. Are we, are we gonna, somebody's gonna participate in that and waste in our time? We, I could talk about it right now for at least an hour and a half. I know that, but I mean, they're, have, they, they're having a conference call. I don't even know where they keep the book of me, how they add to them and they never take them away. I agree. I can, I can tell you who the keeper is. I've met the person, and they keep a book. And the mandates have started to slow down, but they haven't taken one away. And they tried to take two or, two or three away within maybe the last two decades, and both of them failed miserably. So, but anyway, I can guess. Somebody from the city will absolutely in a conference call. Yeah, actually, I think I'm on the committee that actually brought all of this to the governor's attention. So, okay. Under control. Okay, three quick things. I went to a conference last week that was really good. I wish we could have had Norfolk people there on the healthy communities. We were there. And um, I know you had a meeting this morning, and I'd like to have an update on that and to kind of see where we're going. And I'd like to at some point be able to present some of that to this group, because this is uh, really very exciting stuff. Secondly, uh, I know Brooke, this is uh, on, on that one. I think you just missed Catherine Getz. She was there okay. uh, representing more, but we getting good information. I agree. Um, secondly, and I know you're going to groan on this one, but I would like to either at a committee level or something to have it presented to us again about our no-kill policy or our lack of no-kill policy. I'm confused about it. I know we've talked about it a little bit at some meetings, but I'm still perplexed as to what our policy is and why at our animal control center. And, and Terry, that was going to be my concern, and I have sent you an email um, address asking to address it. It has not changed in the last so, 10 years. Basically. And I, so if somebody could bring us the pros and cons a little bit more than golly gee, I don't think we can do it. And also what other localities do that are successful exactly. in their no-kill. I mean, There's to blame the policy the doesn't it. seem like it's the right thing to do when other cities and localities are successful. And this is coming from somebody that has no pets, doesn't care about them. I don't have any pets either, like, but I like the lot of these. I've been telling you to talk about right now. Okay, no, okay you guys. Okay. And then certainly <laughs> another groan on this one, but uh, you know I was surprised to read in the newspaper or online that council voted against having the parties at um, the cemetery. Council obviously didn't vote on that, but I think council might want to weigh in on that. And I would like to at some point. I know Mr. Riddick's view, but I know some of us have different views, and I'm hoping that can bring up come up again that we can talk. about. Okay. Only thing I just wanted to compliment Mr. Mr. Reddick uh, on the south side, the aquatic center. You know, it's been a long time coming, and the mayor, and Mr. Reddick, for your due diligence. And to, people are very excited on the south side about that. So, you know, hats hey, off hey, to Mr. you. Mr. Reddick, uh, Fox, this, that thing started off as a pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I was an Olympic swimmer. <laughs> so, no, we missed an opportunity to mention Minnie Madry's name. Right. We did. You know, we should have. And um, uh, what, what was Minnie's good friend over there on the south side? Uh, the, the other gentleman. Mr. Rose? Mr. Rose. No, I like Joe. All right, Ben. Hor Horace, we should have mentioned. Right. You know, that Minnie okay. Madry came down here 20 years trying to get a cover swimming pool on the south side. So, okay, thank you. Tom, 
I don't have anything. Terry Sola. Terry Sola. We seem to have this. Yeah. Well, I'm for killing animals. I just want to. <laughs> All right. Mr. Riddick's got it. Okay, let's do it. information about the status, the development status of multifamily projects that have been approved. And so what we did is we went back through every multifamily project that has come to City Council, uh, whether it was approved through a rezoning, the special exception, or a development certificate, uh, and we looked at them. And what we want to do is give you information about the status of development on each of these projects since everything that has been approved since July 1st, 2006, looking at it by size and by date. And the other issue Dr. Wibley had asked about was what's the requirement we've done for open space. So what we did is we, did, we looked at every single project that has come to City Council as a multifamily project since 2006, regardless of the status. We looked at it as to whether it is in process, uh, meaning that they either have arranged all of their public funding, because we have a couple of projects that we're looking for a historic tax <coughs> funding, or whether they filed for a site plan, uh, whether they pulled building permits, or whether they've been constructed, and we said those are in process. And I think it's important to recognize that when you approve a project, it's the very beginning stage. Until they have your approval, they can't move to any of these other more detailed stages that will typically take two to three years to work through. When you say public funding, what do you uh, Historic tax credits are what we're looking at. These are projects that, be, that you have approved. Uh, for example, the Rockefeller. Right, I understand for public funding. <laughs> and that's it. All I'm looking at was do they, uh, if they're going for because that's going to slow them down. Okay, that's it. Uh, and then we also looked at the open space. So if you look at this, what you can see is that over this six-year period, <coughs> the City Council has voted on 30 projects totaling close to 4,000 units. And the thing that jumps out at you is the largest number, one-third of those units were approved in 2006-2007. You can actually see how the numbers slowed down as the economy worsened and how it has begun to pick up again in the past. Uh, 18 months. Um, so that we're getting close each year back to the what we were seeing <coughs> six years ago. Is it picking up actually or those were in the, in the uh, they were teed up there <coughs> to come out of the ground and they just actually made their way. So I mean, there's a difference. Between I think the, we're beginning to see some activity pick up and I think that's what you get with this particular chart. Because if you look at this and see where are projects in process, of the eight projects that were approved in 2006, slightly over half have actually, or they're somewhere in the process, they've either been built or they are working on it, and three were not built. As you get 2007, you see it split 50-50. <clears throat> and then what you see in these, these years where we had far fewer projects done, you actually saw more being built, so they were less speculative at this point. And what we're seeing now is it's 50-50. Uh, the ones that are being built right now tend to be, when I say they're in process, they're seeking the historic tax credits. And what gets more telling, though, is if you look at that information by size. Because what you see when you look at this <coughs> is that smaller projects, we did more smaller projects, 50 units or fewer, six years ago. And, and the, as a percentage, we were actually doing, in some years, more of these small projects, and it's the small projects that never progress. And so what you're seeing now is the only small projects that are moving forward are those that have actually got everything in line. Um, but it begins, you, you see a slight reversal because there, were, there are more large projects now and fewer small projects. And the small projects were what were not being built in the past. And if you look at the geographic distribution, uh, what you see is this is across the city. Um, the single biggest project that we have, that city council approved that was never built was Sun Sessions on Southside. It's a little over 400 units. 
never had any activity at all after it got its approval. Uh, and then you see <coughs> that, that Dr. Uh, oh, who was it? That was uh, the, those guys. I think um, sell T-shirts down Virginia Beach. I can't think of the name. That's the name of all the Sunshine Station. Right. Sunshine Station. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was the single biggest project that was yeah. approved, and we've never had any further activity. Spotical uh, Indian River Road. Yeah. And um, this particular project is the Nussbaum project that was voted on earlier this year. I, mean, I apologize, it's a little hard to read, but it actually does have the dates. So what you're seeing, these two are the two new projects uh, that were just done, these other two large red dots. Are because these condominiums in? I understand through my process, I do not control tenure. I, have, I don't have that authority. This could be any multifamily project. Including condominiums. Could be as well condos. As, as well as apartments. Because through the processes I have responsibility for, I don't deal with it, with the nature of ownership. They could, something could come in and start as, a, as condos and then flip to be in apartments, and, and there's nothing I would be able to do with Was Spectrum earlier than that? Uh, Spectrum was earlier than this period, which is why it was would have been another large one that yeah. had no way. Well, they actually did get a site plan approved, but then they never went past yeah. that. So if I were using this, that would have shown as an end process, except their site plan would have expired by now because it's been more than three years. That's yeah, like all four. But yeah. yeah. But lots of the uh, projects that are being proposed, there are apartments that are being proposed that can be converted into condos. I mean, uh, depending it seems like on that's where they are. Some of them I would agree with you. It really gets back to the nature of the funding um, and, and the amenities that they're going to put in. Uh, quite a few of them are actually looking to try to uh, be in a position to convert to condos, I believe, in the future when you begin looking at the amenities that are going to be in. The Whitley, the Whitley uh, project around uh, by Kipsville Road, uh -huh. did nothing ever happen on that, did it? No, yeah. that's this little dot right there. Okay. That's a very small project. Yeah. Which is the, the size of the dots reflects the number of, relative number of units. So the little small dots you're seeing here are 50 units, and if it's just a pinprick, it's less than 50 units. And then the color tells you red, there's no activity at all. The green, they have actually completed construction. Um, the two yellow ones are the two that are pursuing tax credits. Uh, that's the Rockefeller, and this is the uh, Courtney Avenue MUPD. Um, And then if you begin looking at the open space that's been provided, this is a reminder, our regulations say that you have to have 35% of your lot area is open space currently. We can only consider usable open space. That's defined as any piece of ground that is more than 15 feet in width. Uh, and this is the single most frequently requested modification from the ordinance. And so if you look at this, um, you can see that in 2006-07, we were largely maintaining the requirement. <coughs> but since then, we've waived the requirement for the majority of all multifamily projects. This column tells you the average open space that we have, that has been required of these projects as they've come forward. And what you see in 2006-07 was roughly 29% open space, even though the ordinance requirement is 35. It is something council can waive. You get down to in the current year, what we're seeing is 15% open space is the average, and going over the five years, it's 24% is what we're seeing on average. But that, that, that does that also uh, take into account the open space that's all around? <coughs> no, sir. This is only looking at what is open space in the project because by ordinance, that's all we can look at. Okay, so we've deviated in some instances. We have routinely <laughs> deviated from this. And this is why in July I recommended to you we need to relook at these. And if you look at the distribution of open space that's been required, what you see is an interesting pattern. Because what you see is in the more urban areas is where we're requiring very little open space. And as you get out into the more suburban areas, you see that we actually are getting to more than 20%. We compared that, just as a reminder, we compared this to what other jurisdictions around the region were doing. And what you saw is we're requiring twice as much as anyone else. And we also count fewer things, and so we had said we need to revise the open space regulations. You told us to begin that. We are beginning that work. 
Now, one of the things we're looking at doing is trying to tie this back to the character of the area so that in the downtown area, we would have one set of standards in the, uh, and we call that the urban area. The golden, we're calling the traditional area of the city, where it has a different standard. And the yellow has is a suburban area that has a, a, another standard. And what we recommended to you back in July was 10% mandatory open space in urban, 15% in traditional, 20% in suburban. Revise the definition so it's not just a dimension of 15 feet in width, and then say that we're not going to modify it. And the interesting thing is, if you apply this standard, what you see is what council has been approving over the past six years generally fits. You basically have been doing what we're <laughs> recommending you do for the past six years. Frank, we were ahead of you, Frank. You were. Frank, 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 progressive group. Frank, in, in light hey, wait, wait, Andy, go ahead. The TODs, are those marked in black yes. circles? Yes. And the reason... The reason they are in black is because when we adopted those, we did not actually put the regulations on the ground, and the draft regulations would require that you provide a percentage of the open space, just as you do a percentage of the required parking in those areas once the regulations are put on there. Well, it, explain this to me. If you go back, I think, one, one slide, it shows the TOD, the two TODs that are in the suburban mm -hmm. uh, still have a 20%. And they, I would think that, frankly, those would have more of an urban feel, and that was the whole point. <clears throat> and that was the issue that we would be looking at these with going with the, the traditional. It would, that's why I say it would get a reduction, but we're not doing that now because the zoning for these is not on the ground. The only thing you've done is designate these through the general plan. We are bringing forward a text amendment right now, uh, working with Mr. Pishko's office, to actually set up these character districts in the zoning ordinance as well as in the plan. And we also were setting up that when these get areas get designated in the general plan in this golden color, the open space would then be applying the urban standards there as opposed to the traditional. And you get to the more suburban area, it would apply the traditional area as opposed to the suburban. It, it's okay. a good point. So, <coughs> at, at Harbor Park, the Harbor Park is downtown. Right. Okay. By zoning, so that would be applying the urban standard automatically. Okay, Terry. In light of the concerns we have with flooding, are we defeating ourselves by uh, reducing uh, our green space and hence uh, further compromising our stormwater drainage that's already at um, its limits and beyond? I don't believe so. I think the real challenge we've got is to include the opportunity as part of open space to include parts of your stormwater system. But right now you get no credit for it. And if you go back and you look at what other jurisdictions do, they allow you to use a portion of your stormwater system, give credit to that toward open space because it does create visual open space. And that's one of the other things we'd be recommending to you. Because we do need to address that issue. Because right now when you waive it, the open space requirement, what you're doing is getting far more impervious surface in all of these areas that have a red. And I'll tell you, we do have one issue that we continue to talk about, and that is in, if you look at these three red dots, they're all in downtown, and no open space was required. Well, my answer to that is that's appropriate if you apply our current standard, which is all green space, because in the urban areas of the city, you ought to be counting different kinds of open space, count courtyards, count plazas, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be green. Green is great, but we need to look at recognizing that, that urban character, and that's really where we're trying to get to with this. Um, so what we saw with this, looking at the analysis, is most of the, the projects that have been approved by city council, 65%, two-thirds of them, actually began within three years. It takes roughly three years to get everything in line once they've got their approval. We also saw that smaller projects are far less likely to be built. <clears throat> they tend to be more speculative, and that's why we're seeing fewer of them right now than we were seeing six years ago, because the market is just not as strong for them. And then we're also acknowledging that the open space that we recommended to you in July, it's exactly as the mayor said, you guys have been doing this. I had no idea this was going to show up this way when we, we ran this, these numbers, but you guys have been in practice doing what we recommended to you 
with regard to open space all along? Well, I think a lot of it actually goes back to who comes down to the checks and not who does it. And most of the communities have been accepting them, these types of open space requirements. And as was we got to the right Okay, real, real quick. Do you want to? Yeah. Just the, the projects that go back to 2006 and haven't been started yet. Would it be your recommendation to um, go back and revert the zoning back to whatever it was? Should they stay on the books uh, with that zoning? The challenge you have got with those <coughs> is that you can only rezone them to a standard zoning district that is going to be consistent with how their plan designation <coughs> is. Um, so it does begin to be challenging. I think you'd have to look at that issue one on one. I don't think you can have an across-the-board answer to that question, and I would recommend that we go back and look at those projects that were approved more than five years ago and have never been built. Uh, Spectrum is a prime example. <coughs> Spectrum couldn't be built now because it's not going to meet uh, because of the additional uh, approvals I would need from the state. <coughs> so I think the issue would be trying to go in and look at all of these projects and, and come back um, individually, but I don't think you can make a blanket statement about it. Okay, what is it Daryl's going to say to us? Are you Mayor, aware? because uh, we actually have the uh, session on Tuesday. If we could carve out a couple minutes for Tuesday, because this vote wouldn't come up until the 22nd. We just didn't want you to have to hear some first-time vote. There, there is one issue, if we could take a minute, at Lambert's point that it's just come to our attention that I'd like to make sure that <coughs> the council is aware of. Stanley has a uh, this past Friday, we discovered that a portion of the bank down by the river below the 6th and 7th hole on the Lambert's Point Golf Course has begun to slough into the Elizabeth River. No exposing the balls going <laughs> well, Now I know the cause. Uh, I've been a lot of balls in the water there. But, and I thought it was my son. But some of the garbage has been uh, uncovered because of that and everything. Just wanted to let you know that we're on top of it. We've hired an engineering firm will be out there this week and will give us a temporary fix as well as a solution for a, a more permanent fix. This site had, was, a, was visited by DQ back in 1995 and they approved the shoreline, everything was fine. We do annual checks on it. So this isn't something that's been eroding right along. It's just recently uh, occurred. And we just didn't want you to be surprised by it. There's anything more on top of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Marcus, what are we doing Tuesday? Uh, you have the retirement board, so it's 2 o'clock. Okay, we're going to vote? We have a vote. Oh, no, we're going to vote. Okay. We don't have a presentation.